Hello, and welcome to another episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. My executive producer, Tully, and I would like to show you how we're transitioning the series away from just discussing the features of specific structure types to getting into the ceremonial sites out here in Gilbert Hill State Forest. I've selected this one as the first one because I came uh, across it during the tour recently by NERA, the New England Antiquities Research Association. Uh, and this was the second to last stop on that tour. Chuck Drayton did an overview and I noticed uh, that the structure of this site is exactly like one about a mile away. And it's in their similarities with a prayer seat and a stone here that I'm sitting on that may give us insight to exactly what type of ritual or ceremony this was constructed for. So if that's interesting, stick around and we'll get into the details. Welcome to where the stones have a story to tell. In this channel, we explore a single forest in Foxborough, Massachusetts, Gilbert Hills State Forest, where we seek to understand the hundreds of ancient stone structures and their potential historical and spiritual context, seemingly ignored by the archaeological community. In this segment of our series, we focus on ceremonial sites, which are clusters of structures close enough in proximity that they may have had some common purpose. I'm headed out uh, here to take one more shot of to make the point I'm trying to make. But as I head out here, I'll use this time to lay out the theory of what I believe these sites to mean. Coming from the work of Manitou by Maver and Dix, there are essentially four purposes for prayer seats that we know of. One would be what I call shaman recharging stations. Shaman or medicine people utilizing these structures to recharge their powers of healing or what have you. Two, shaman for the generation of vision quests. Three, shaman in training, utilization of training shaman as they go along. And four, coming of age ceremonies for Native Americans. It is these last two uh, uses that I think are relevant in the analysis for this episode. And keep in mind that it's really the positioning of the prayer seat with his, which across from what I'm calling the bench that is unique and consistent between the two sites that leads me to the conclusion that potentially this particular ceremonial formation is utilized in either shaman training or coming of age where there is an individual in the prayer seat being guided by an elder or shaman or what have you. All right, so with that, here we go. We'll start with the prayer seat. You can see here, this ground slopes off. It's flat between that sitting stone, if you will, and the prayer seat, then sloping back off here. There's stone all the way around the base of this, and then building up to the prayer seat itself. This prayer seat has is well-formed uh, and well-preserved, certainly not all the ones that we've seen here are uh, this well preserved. Uh, however, um, there are probably at least 30 prayer seats in Gilbert Hill State Forest and many of them uh, have been um, broken down over time. Let's just take a look at this from the position of the prayer seat. You see these stones in the back here, somewhat triangular, facing directly out to the structure out here. Uh, it is facing roughly 40 to 45 degrees, depending on how you 
take your aim. And what we will find here is in relationship to the other one, certainly the next one. There is a stone row behind here, megaliths behind that. And we're going to see that same orientation in, uh, and certainly the next site. Now let's take a little closer look at this sitting stone here. We see several of them. This would be the main one here, an embedded boulder down to the left, another stone placed to the left, and then an embedded boulder to the right. All right, so we're going to travel past the site here. You can see a stone row along here. It actually isn't really a stone wall because it ends right here. It's not marking anything in particular. We travel about 100 feet before we're going to get to two huge megaliths. And another very interesting feature. So here, this is about uh, 20 feet high, the stone here. Another over here. But this is where it begins to get interesting. Right around here is this very oddly shaped V shaped structure and if you can see through the glare here the Sunseeker app is posted on the day of the summer solstice which was just yesterday and it points directly to sunrise at the summer solstice that is not all this does here however I'm going to go up and over this because a stone row comes out of this in exactly the same line. So we definitely have uh, some associated structures here with that prayer seat and sitting stone uh, relating to the summer solstice. There's quite possibly more around here, but having uh, played around with this just in the middle of the summer, uh, the forest is so dense, it's hard to really pick up on it. So we may take another look at this uh, when the foliage comes down. So with that, let's head over to our second site. We are at the second of the two sites, and you're, the, you're positioned exactly where you were uh, and the camera angle on the first site. That is the cairn, U-shaped cairn or prayer seat facing this flat stone perfectly situated as a bench. The similarities here are striking. If you've got a prayer seat facing a bench, you're going to see in uh, the side-by-side -side comparison of the LiDAR that the distance between these two structures are almost exactly the same. Behind me in the distance is a stone row, just as there was in the first site, and on the other side of that, a ceremonial site as well. In the first site, we had a pointer stone and a stone row pointing at sunrise in the summer solstice. Over this hill, it's a little different. It is a series of cairns capped off by a stream bed cairn that we covered in the entire episode 15 of this, of this series. So prayer seat, bench, flat face, exactly the same distance, stone row behind us, ceremonial site behind that. The direction from where you're looking over my shoulder from the prayer seat through the bench, here is about 75 degrees. In the first site, it's about 45. Not exactly the same, but it is east-northeast, so it is directionally the same. So we've got some differences, but many similarities. And we are exactly a mile or nine-tenths of a mile 
from the first site here in Gilbert Hills. So with that, let's take a closer look using LiDAR to show you this second site and have a conversation about how it compares to the first site in our student teacher prayer seat configuration. Site number one on the left, site number two on the right. You can see that prayer seat at the bottom. Now we're going to rotate around to the sitting or bench stones. And you really see the flat face on both of these on the left. And that's really the characteristic telltale sign of this type of student teacher prayer seat configuration. Now I'm going to back out a second and go take a look at the distances. You see 13 feet on the left and 12.9 on the right. So really the exact same distance, the exact same shaped stone facing the prayer seat. Focusing on site two, that prayer seat isn't as well built, but you can definitely see the curvature to it, uh, though it's a bit broken down. Now, side-by-side -side comparison, let's wrap up this episode, the prayer seat on the right and that sitting stone or bench on the left. This is really the telltale sign of this type of student teacher type site. I hope you enjoyed our first episode of breaking down ceremonial sites here at Gilbert Hills State Forest. And uh, there are many more to come. So feel free to like, subscribe, and comment on what you've seen in this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.